Finish it yourself. FYI, 533's new. If you're lucky in life, you learn that you should always finish what you started. But you know what's even better than that? Finishing what someone else started. 533's new finish it yourself build kit. You put the last finishing touches at basically no cost to you. Finish it. Now this takes all of the careful build techniques done by their team of professional builders and does all the hard work for you, leaving only your video system and your receiver to be installed. They put together the frame for you. They install the electronic speed controller. They wire up all four of the motors. They wire up your XT60 power connector. They even harness and connect up the flight controller. All you gotta do when you get it is install your receiver of choice along with your video system of choice and that's it. This came in the mail yesterday afternoon and I was able to in about 30 minutes a total of eight wires soldering and four screws and I was ready to go fly like I couldn't believe it. This is actually pretty good. Juicy. This new build feels quite good. Cruising around just just wait 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 no whoa I can't believe I just did that. Okay, I crashed all the way behind this brush, trying really hard not to step on any snakes. Yvonne saw like a really big snake here the other day. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? And the grass is high. It's very itchy. And I'm trying to keep my eye out for cows that might try to sneak up on me. They're back here somewhere. It smells like the zoo, so I must be getting close to their lair. It's not every day when one of the companies in FPV comes up with a new concept behind maintaining and building your fleet. The age old recommendation of build it yourself or buy a bind and fly and save all the time and money. Well, what if you could have the best of both worlds built by professional builders and just put the last finishing touches. Now you can see just the four wires here at the back, TX5, RX5, 5 volt and ground four. This HD0 V3 video transmitter. The combo comes with this nice mount right here. All of these prints are available on printables. Then on the bottom of the flight controller, these four wires going to the Express LRS receiver. And I mounted that with double-sided tape just in front of the power leads right here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and experiment once more with the Express LRS tiny ceramic antenna right there. And what do you notice when we mount the flight controller on top? You have just enough room for that antenna to stick out right behind it. So hopefully that'll be good enough for some decent reception. This is gonna be for racing, so it's not meant to go long range. If this doesn't work well, I'll just switch it over to something like the Radio Master RP1 and then mount that antenna on top. Here we go, without props, 200. 138 grams, not bad at all. By giving all of the perfect motor soldering joints, taking the care that you don't necessarily always go to take, meaning that I can try out this new Light Switch Ultra V2 by 533, one of the lightest, most popular racing builds in the world for only $300. I totaled up all of the costs of every component that they're using. The T-Motor ESC, the Foxier flight controller, these championship edition motors, the frame and the prints, and it costs $305. So for only $2, they can build it for you and ship it to you. Why spend three, four hours putting together, soldering up, measuring the wire lengths, making sure you got flux on your tip when you can just have it all done for you. And here's the thing, guys. A lot of times when you're out there flying and racing, you may kill some motors. You may even kill electronic speed controllers in a hard enough crash and maybe the flight controller, but usually the video system sitting on top survives. The receiver sitting either on top or in the back or squirreled away somewhere survives. Whenever I go on a long trip like IO, or mayhem. I always want to bring enough spares. Do I have enough spares? Do I have enough spares? But you know what I end up having extras of? The video system and the receiver. You don't have to take all that extra time. If you want to build up a new fleet of six quads before one of those big races, you know how much time it's going to take you? If you're spending three to four hours a piece, it can just magically show up at your doorstep. Oh, the one quad I built that tiny receiver on. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to fly it so far. I finally made it back here. And how fast can a cow run? How high can a cow jump? They charged me, is it possible to run in a circle around a tree like they do on the cartoons? Ugh, this is sketching me out. Ugh, I had to come all the way back to the car, take a break. I've been looking for almost two hours. 
I've looked up into every tree I can think of. I don't know if I just landed in that water. I can't really get down and look as much as I want because all those cows are there. And I thought it was just lady cows and all of a sudden I saw one trying to mount the other one. I saw that pink thing. She was kind of like shrugging him off and I'm thinking like, okay, he's not gonna be in a good mood after he just got shrugged off. And so I don't wanna be standing 10 feet away from this. So it's my worst nightmare to lose a quad that I just got on the second pack before I can finish anything. Uh, could be anywhere in that area. Three hours later. Oh, oh. Yeah, I had to go swimming in order to get this thing back um so yes brand new quad second pack i was like so upset at the possibility of losing it i know better than to ever fly over water but i didn't even know that there was like a little bit of a stream back here i've never gotten close to these cows thank goodness they weren't like attack cows yes i'm a city folk sorry about that guys but they were definitely eyeing me, especially when I got on the water. And right when I almost got in there, one of them was sitting in there and kept eyeing me. It was a lady cow and it just took a huge piss like right in front of me in the water and then I had to get in it. Uh, but it was still the nastiest, slimiest, sinking downiest, just all around ickiest water you could ever imagine. Ugh, I'm gonna go home and take like 17 showers. I only got three packs today, but I'll be back to kin finish testing this thing. The next day. Why you didn't use this bridge, Johnny Five? Why? There is a bridge. You, did you just want to get butt naked in the wild? Like Yeah, I asked you if the cows were dangerous and you said they're probably okay, but you never told me there's a bridge. You never asked if there was a bridge. Like, oh yeah, there's a bridge, didn't you know? No, I didn't know. I I'm asking if the quads are friendly, so I clearly don't know. 300 feet there behind this bush, there's that's that's where John had to swim over the creek. Pretty nasty. It's probably 50% cow poo and 50% cow pee. Look how beautiful this thing is. This is cleaner, more well taken care of soldering than I would have done for the motor wires, and it still gives you the satisfaction of doing a build, which is kind of nice. You can see, look at the little feet on the bottom for the light switch B2 Ultra has these little cutouts here and that's meant to save a little bit of weight. For arm swaps, they should be pretty easy. All of the gummies and everything are pre-measured. I didn't really have to run any of these screws because it was all done for you already. So that's the other nice thing is it comes with all of the perfectly sized hardware for everything, just saving a ton of time. It's kind of a blessing towards drone community because I don't even know how they're possibly making money at this. 533, how are you making money at this? <laughs> Should we be worried? This thing flies so locked in. Mondo, one of the best FPV racing engineers in the industry is not disappointed with this Light Swish Ultra V2. It is so locked in. There's so much rigidity here. There's so little arm wiggle that even with just a basic karate tune without any other time tuning, it flies like it's on rails. It flies perfectly. You can just pick it up and go be competitive immediately. Immediately. And the fact that they give it all to you for just the cost of the parts, your build fee is free, your shipping is free, it's mind blowing. But that's the measure of how much you actually like a quad. What are you willing to do to get it back? But as nasty as I felt after that, I would have felt a whole lot nastier losing this thing. Thanks guys.